Our yes. Heavenly Father, thank you. First thank of all, you. Thank you. for now to wake up this morning. So yes. much. So today we should have seen you before the day, but never see you again. Now, for loving kindness and your yes. graciousness, we're not being here today. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Be in this place with us today, because uh, we look up you, not ourselves. Oh, Lord, you glory, the honor, and the praise. Thank you, Jesus. That's his ministry. Yes, sir, Lord. Our pastor and his ministry staff, yes, sir. Yes. musicians, yes, sir. and the widow workers oh, yes, in their ministry. Yes, yes sir. Bless this world that we live in right now, Father yes, God. Yes, so we always have the women that you are still in control of all things. Oh, God, yes. And I pray that you are still in control of all things. Oh, You're talking about war, but that's all right, God. Oh, God. You're not going to settle that down. Yes. You calm the wind, you calm the war. You have to worry about it. Yes. It's in your hands, not in our hands. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. But I will make a joyful shout to the Lord. Mm -hmm. All you glad. Share the Lord with gladness. I'm going to the singing. So he is the Lord of God. He made us and not what I tell you. We're his people and the sheep of his back. We enter your gate with thanksgiving. Yes. 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 Thanks to you, Dave. And bless your holy name. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And do it to all generations. Amen.
Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me, break me, melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Lord, for your glory. Empower me, Spirit of the living God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the saints of God said, Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading today can be found in Psalms 78, verses 41 through 43. Psalms 78, verses 41 through 43. When you have it, say amen. amen. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he had wrought his sons in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. Verse 41. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Psalm 78 author is said to be Asaph, who was a great singer and musician of David and Solomon's era. Asaph invites those with spiritual understanding to hear the instructions and wise sayings that he is about to share. Those without spiritual perception would not be able to interpret and apply the truths he was about to teach. They would remain mysteries from their view. This is similar to those who were without spiritual insight and unwilling to receive it would be unable to understand Jesus' parables. Jot down Matthew 13, 10 through 17. The purpose of Psalm 78 was to recount God's faithfulness throughout Israel's history so that a future generation and progressive missionary Baptist church would praise God for the wondrous works he has performed for his people. Go ahead and sit up in your seat and clear your throat if you must. I did all the above because I am guilty of putting limits on an unlimited God. Hey, sister and brother, chair, I know your salvation is safe and sealed and you are Holy Ghost filled. So I'm not talking to you. If it's okay, Pastor, I would like to take a few minutes and preach to those who are willing to receive a word from God today. I would like to use for a title, Take Your Limits Off of an Unlimited God. They turned back in verse 41. Why did they turn back? Their hearts longed for Egypt and its flesh pots. Fat daddies, the vault nightclub and lounge. Oh, y'all don't know nothing about the place. That's brothers and sisters, brother and sister chair, that's their hangout. Help me hold the ghost. The children of Ephraim turned to their old ways again and again after they had been scourged or punished out of them. Constantly twisting and turning, they never kept a straight path. This tempted God. And I'm still in verse 41. What God was trying to do for them was good, but they wanted it their way, putting their limits on an unlimited God. Yeah. They doubted his power. They put limits on what he could do because he did not operate on their schedule. Yeah. Are we going to put limits on God because he did not move when we wanted him to? You didn't get the job promotion you were looking for the new car, the new house, or because God did not heal us or our loved ones according to our limited thinking. God would not be led by a string we pull off. He is God omnipotent, mm -hmm. having unlimited power mm -hmm. and authority. Yes. He is God in total control of himself. Uh -huh. 
and all his creation. God does and will do as he sees that which is good to him. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Say amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, we sometimes forget to remember. Yes, that's not an error in speech or grammar. All right. I say if we too forget to remember where God has brought us from wow. and what he has called us out of. Uh -huh. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, yeah. and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Here in verse 42, they remember not his hand. Now it had to be difficult to forget the display of divine power. The way God smote Egypt with astonishment, that is not something you can just forget. Even if you tried hard not to remember, you remember. When did God do something amazing in your life? Or cause your enemy to become your footstool? Is it still in the forefront of your memory? Some of us may not want to acknowledge that God has been better than good. But oh, my sister, my brother, you remember. The children of Ephraim, it is probably meant that they practically almost forgot, they might have forgot, rather than actually, truthfully, and really forgot. I think I heard someone say it's called selective memory. Wow. We remember what we want to remember. He who forgets the natural returns of gratitude may justly be charged with not remembering the obligation. Verse 42 nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. They did not remember God's power. Asaph must have been thinking about the great power God showed in setting Israel free for their four, free from their 400 years of slavery in Egypt. Uh -huh. The Exodus redemption is often presented in the Hebrew scriptures as a demonstration of the power of God. Amen. I remember as a battalion maintenance non-commissioned officer traveling all over Afghanistan one particular time after returning from a mission on a Black Hawk helicopter. The maintenance crew on the ground said we had been leaking fuel while flying. To God be the glory. On a convoy mission to one of the FOB's forward operating bases, we arrived and immediately started taking rockets into the compound. I was exposed and had to run to the bunker. I don't need to tell you the rest of this story. It is obvious. I was delivered from the enemy. So when you hear me talking about my expectations of God in my life and his unlimited power, it is not pride. I like how the Williams brothers put it. You see, I am a living testimony. I could have been dead and gone. But Lord, you let me live on. I am a living testimony, and I thank the Lord I'm still alive. I've seen miracle after miracle performed in my life. You keep having mercy on me. I've been blessed to be alive. When I couldn't see, Lord, you kept your angels and kept around me. And I want to take this time to say thank you, Lord, for keeping me alive. I've taken my limits off of an unlimited God. Job 36, 20 through 22 through 24 in the contemporary English version reads, God's power is unlimited. Amen. He needs no teachers mm. to guide or correct him. Mm. Others have praised God right. for what he has done, yes. so join with them. Amen. Mm. Do not let what God has already done for you mm. be erased from your mental calendar. Mm. So you can always look back to that date and time. Amen. Is there anybody here today right. or watching live can say you know that you know if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you don't know where you would be. We serve a God that has no limits as to what he can and will do. He's able 
He's able. He's able to do far beyond all that we can ask or imagine by his power and work within us. Glory to God. Yes, the things God has already done are signs of what he can and will continue to do when we take our limitations out the equation. Progressive. God is doing great things right before our very eyes. Amen. How he had brought his signs in Egypt, I'm in verse 43. God performed signs or made these things happen. The plagues were in signs or an identity of God's presence and proof of his hatred of idols. This instructive acts of power were performed in the open view of all. All signals which were set up to be observed by those far and near. Amen. I'm expecting God to perform miracles. Yeah. Not just in Fayetteville yeah. or Rayford, yeah. but all over North Carolina. Yeah. In the poor and underprivileged neighborhoods, yeah. as well as in the upper class and overprivileged yeah. neighborhoods. Yeah. Let's take our limits off an unlimited God. The Bible says we are chosen people. We are royal priesthood, which means we have direct access and fellowship with God like a priest. But we are also called to expand the kingdom of God and influence the world like a king and queen. Now is not the time to give up. Do not get weary in well-doing. The Bible says for the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Keep the faith. I'm on my way to my seat. But that, I'm on my way to my seat. But. And that but just erased everything I said. Okay. Before I take my seat, I want to give you three ways we can limit God. There are many more. There's quite more than three. Like keeping God in a box until Sunday. Mm -hmm. Help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. The first way we limit God is we sin. Mm -hmm. Or we backslide. Mm -hmm. We put a wedge between us and God with our sin. Yeah. Isaiah 59 and 2 says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you. That he will not hear. But here's the good news found in 1 John, 1 John 1, 9, 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not only does our sin keep God from hearing us, without confession, we're missing what God has to tell us in our one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Father. Mm -hmm. The second way we limit God, we do not trust. It is those times when there seems to be so much trouble in our life. Mm -hmm. We're not sure if God even is nearby. Mm -hmm. Our trust is in question. So we limit God by not trusting his sovereignty. God has supreme power and authority over everything. And that same power and authority he has given his children. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. The third way we limit God, we don't expect a lot. So we don't get a lot. Did you expect to wake up this morning? Or did you lie down last night not even thinking about it? What do you expect from God? I expect him to honor every promise in his word. As it applies to my life and the life of my family. For all the promises of God in him are yes. And in him, amen. amen. To the glory of God through us. Yes. God already told us he knows the plans he has for us. Amen. For I know the plans I have for you, amen. says the Lord. Amen. Declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm amen. you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. So that's exactly what I believe. Yeah. Uh -huh. Look at your neighbor and tell them, me too. Me too. 
We need to raise our expectations when it comes to the things of God. Amen. The world is full of limits. They put limits on everything. Amen. Not to say that it's wrong. We need speed limits on the roads. Yeah, especially in Fayetteville. <laughs> Having limits helps us organize investments of our time, energy, and other resources. Amen. The idea of limits is not to overdo it or or invest too few of our resources into a specific thing. There is an optimal amount of investments needed for everything we do in life. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a story right. about a man from Galilee mm -hmm. yeah. sent by the Father. He came through 42 generations. Right. As a man, he had limitations. Right. He got tired. Right. He became thirsty. And hungry. But as God, he had unlimited power. Jesus. Jesus is this man. Mary's baby. The bright and morning star. The lily of the valley. Some call him wonderful counselor. I call him my rock. They tried to limit his power by hanging on the old rock cross. They hung him high and they pressed him wide. Nailed in his hands, nailed in his feet. They pierced him in his side. On the cross he died for you and I. But that's not how the story ends. You see, they took our table now from that old rugged cross and buried him in a bottle of tomb. Jesus, Son of the living God, He laid there all day Friday and all day Saturday. 